Welcome back, everyone, to Read to Me TT Bedtime Stories. Hope you're all ready for another fun bedtime story. Um, so before we actually start the story, we are going to just tell you a little bit about ourselves. So I am Auntie Prashanta, and this is Auntie, Auntie Trisha. Trisha. <laughs> Auntie Trisha. Um, Trisha and I are actually pretty good friends, having worked in Monzo together for many, many years. Yeah. Um, and we actually have a lot of things in common. So I'm a mummy to two little girls. And I'm a mummy to two little boys. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so my kids are Thea, who's four, and Suri, who's three. Yeah, and I have Divyam, who's three, and Davin, who's one. Yep, and we are both pediatricians. Yes, um, which means we take, our, take care of little kids like you. Yes, so we are kind of like Doc McStuffins, except um, instead of toys, we actually take care of you guys. Um, <laughs> so when you're sick. Um, and sometimes when you're well, we, we see you for your checkups and yes. Auntie Trisha sees you for your vaccines or your shots. But my sweet patients, even when I give them their shots, they, they don't stay mad at me. They still smile at me before they go. <laughs> um, and well, I also work in the hospital in a place called the NICU. Um, and that is where we have the very, very tiny newborn baby. Um, yes. So I spend my day taking care of the, of them. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, uh, ready for this story? Yay. All right. Yay. <laughs> so as you all know, these past few weeks have had us inside. Um, but just remember, we're all being heroes in our own way by staying inside and flattening the crew. Uh, yeah. So tonight we have a great story called Nancy, an unusual experience. Auntie Trisha, who is the amazing author? Right. So you kids know what the author is? An author is the person who wrote the book. And the person who wrote this book is Galena Cox. So are you all ready to get started? Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> get started. All right, so I will be starting with the introduction. So here goes everybody. Again, we meet the Anansi family. And again, it is Christmas time. The Spider-Man Anansi is moody and brooding on this particularly rainy Christmas morning. Right. Cinnamon sticks. And so it is that rainy morning the spidery Anansi awakes to eight arms full of his two Anansi children, tugging at him from every direction, pleading with him to come downstairs to open a gift under the Christmas tree. He, Anansi, never likes a rainy Christmas morning. He yawns and stretches. It is daylight and it is Christmas. Nevertheless, he gets out of bed to wishes of Merry Christmas. Later that morning, left alone for a while, Anansi and Mrs. Anansi sit at the table sipping coffee. They use cinnamon sticks to stir, stirring slowly. They sip and they talk, for the children are too excited by their new toys to feel hungry, or even remember that they have Anansi parents. However, Still late in the day, when they gather for a late Christmas lunch, it is then that Anansi, in between mouthfuls of green fig salad, decides to relate this experience. Okay, so the next chapter is called A Giant Windy Hand. The night before, <laughs> in between a pitter and splash of raindrops, no, a patter, Atter, um, and splash of raindrops on the pavement, there arose an unusual wind, Ooh. which, <laughs> not content to only ruffle Mrs. Anansi's pretty new drapes, she ruffles and weaves herself into the Anansi house, winding her way up the Anansi staircase into the Anansi bedrooms, tearing here and tearing there until at last reaching the room shared by Anansi and his charming wife. 
Here, this unusual gust shapes herself into a giant windy hand large enough to pick up an unsuspecting Anansi, leaving behind Mrs. Anansi asleep. Come with me, Anansi, says the unusual wind. I will take you on a little trip. That's my windy voice. I don't know. <laughs> Poor Anansi. He is terrified. Yet still, he clutches Wind's giant hand and off they go swoosh into the night. Anansi thinks to himself, this must be exactly how great Moon feels in all her waning and waxing shapes. There, suspended in the night sky, he thinks he even saw an unusually bright star in passing. So chapter three, on camel back three. Tossed, swiveled and swilled, and Nancy is so terrified, he cannot even feel air sick. This great spider man, Anansi, who can at a whim weave amazing webs, he peers through the night, thick and dark, to see what he could see. There they are, far down below, three unusually dressed men riding on the backs of camels, carrying gifts of some sort. They sit so regally in the desert of falling snowflakes. Not even once brushing away a snowflake. Snowflakes in the desert, you might ask. Yes, snowflakes in the desert. It is, you must remember, an unusual night. Some even call it a holy night. And Nancy thinks, how wise these three men are, sitting on the backs of camels, holding their packages ever so tightly, ever so securely. They seem to be traveling very far into the night, and their camels stride happily nonetheless. They do not even look tired. I love all the camel um, emojis <laughs> in <Yes>. the comments. <laughs> <laughs> Chapter four, where? Anansi is enthralled. He stares, his spidery mouth wide open in amazement. But where are they? <laughs> where are they going? Just the three of them. There is no one else about. And at this very late hour of the night, don't they have families? Wise to help with shelling of pigeon peas? Don't can't say that I shell pigeon peas. Children's <laughs> gifts to wrap? Ham to bake for the paranderos when they visit? As he asks these questions of wind, with each question his mood softens and his spidery face brightens. Where are we, Anansi asks again. Wind, however, had spoken her bit for the night when she had commanded, Come with me, Anansi. And so, to Anansi's questions now, she gives no reply. It is just swoosh after swoosh after swoosh as wind goes this way and that, carrying poor Anansi in her grasp. Anansi, who could spin fabulous webs, was caught securely in wind's grasp, helpless. Signpost. Anansi, from trillions of night clouds above, creams his neck this way and that. He thinks he saw a sign. Yes, it is. A neon sign which reads, Bethlehem Ephrathah Stable, about two to three swishes away. Gently, 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 Anansi is nearing the ground. Then wind opens slightly, the door to a stable. No one looked around. The door is open so quietly. And it is there Anansi sees Ox, donkey, sheep, cattle, all present, serenely, in the sweet hay. Some munching and some not. The same three unusually dressed men are presenting gifts, too. And this is when Anansi squeals with delight. Baby <laughs> Jesus and Mary and Joseph, shepherds and the little trouble boy. And Nancy claps his hands for joy and does a happy dance. But no one looks around. No one sees or hears Nancy. But everyone hears 
the angels singing joy to the world. Let us receive the king. Yeah. So on to the next chapter from air to air. It is indeed a night so holy. What a wondrous feeling. Wind, thank you for lifting my spirits. Thank you for taking me back to the true meaning of Christmas, says a humbled, happy Nancy, smiling from air to air. I see the smile. Yes, very nice. <laughs> there, is, <laughs> there is no response from wind. And Nancy looks around trying to find wind. Wind, wind, wind. But there is no wind, only a very contented Anansi. A coolness, a feeling of joy, and a stable full of warmth and peace and love. All lit up in the glow of a wondrous, unusually bright star. A star with a tail extending into the deep, inky, dark sky. A tail which reminds Anansi of flying kites with his children in the Queen's Park savannah on a bright sunny day. Kites, high above blooming hui trees, some with pink flowers and some with brilliant yellow flowers. The next chapter, Fry Bakes. Well, like I said before, and I'm saying again, it was an unusually rainy December when Anansi awoke one morning in a rather dull, lethargic mood for he never liked rainy Christmases. Anyways, there was nothing unusual in the family kitchen in the tropical island of Trinidad, in which cooking oil slowed to an eerie hot stillness in a large frying pot, even though it was raining outside, into which the radiant Mrs. Anansi was dropping evenly formed bits of white flour dough, making fried bakes on that particular Christmas morning. And he, Anansi, had to lose his grumpiness and get out of bed, even though it was raining. He just did not like rain on a Christmas morning. And this is how that Christmas day started. The end. <laughs> yeah? I hope you yeah. like a story. Oh, hi, Bimmy. <laughs> Love any comments, guys. Thank you so much. <laughs> I love that people without kids are listening too. I know. I hope you, I hope the adults enjoy that bedtime story as well. <laughs> Thanks again, everyone, for joining us for Read to Me TT's nightly bedtime series. Hope you had fun reading with us. But before we go, and it is really very important that you listen. So I hope all the kiddies are listening. Do you want to be little superheroes? And to Krishanta, what superhero do you want to be? Oh my God. Uh, <laughs> I want to be, hmm, who are the girl superheroes? Let's Wonder see. Woman. Wonder Woman. But who else? Yes. Wonder Woman. Girl in my house, Peppa Pig is a superhero. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Anna and Elsa are superheroes. Superhero All the too. Disney princesses are superheroes. Yes. Iron Man, Batman, Hulk. What superhero you guys want to be? So to be superheroes, what you can do is wash your hands with soap and water and sing happy birthday two times. So Did that's you so you know you wash it long enough. And keep your hands out of your mouth. And you need to remind mommy and daddy and granny and everybody else to wear masks when they leave the house. You all can even make a game out of it. Yes. We can do this. Why? Because we are all in this together. Yay. Yay. So see you tomorrow, kitties. Oh, I think Eli wants to be Batman. <laughs> We're so many superheroes. I love Batman. <laughs> <laughs> Each one of us is a superhero, guys. Each one yeah. of us. <laughs> so see you tomorrow, kitties, for a brand new story with two new readers. Good night. Good night. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye, Bye Trish.
Bye, Craig. <laughs>